The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a mom of three kids, ages two, five, and seven, and I live in Southern California. And I'm Megan. I am the mom of five kids, ages six through 17, and I live in Michigan. This is the Mom Hour, part of the Life Listened Network. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 23 of the Mom Hour. I'm Megan Francis here as always with Sarah Powers. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Megan. How are you? I'm great. So Sarah and I are cheating. We're actually taping this two weeks ahead of when it will run because on the day we would have filmed, or not filmed, taped, um, we'll be together at the Beyond Retreat in Michigan. Okay. So Yay. excited. We don't see each other in person very often for those who not nearly haven't often been enough, following so. us. I know. We may sound yeah. like we're chummies, but... Few well, we are. We're just long-distance chums. We are. Chummies. We're long-distance chums. So today we're talking about um, food planning and meal prep and grocery shopping and all those things that we have to do to keep our families fed that sometimes aren't that fun. Yes. But actually can be a lot more fun if we kind of come at it with the right attitude and maybe the knowledge. Maybe that's the key. I don't know. Yeah. And I have um, to say, I have to jump in and say that of all the things that you've been wise about over the years that we've been <laughs> working together, this is probably an area where I feel like I've learned the most from you, if I step back and like, you know, think of it as like a reader, listener, um, learner of Megan things, this is probably like where I've really taken a lot of what you've written to heart. So, um, there's a lot we work on together and that, you know, of course I stand behind, but this is one where I always feel like you're teaching me because you just, you've just, I feel like you've shared a lot of ways that you've learned to love cooking for your family and made things easier. And I, it gives me hope. So Well, that's good. Okay. So I want to back up really quick before we even get into this and just say like where I was when I had, let's say two kids under the age of six, you know, and a baby on the way. Um, I was a mess in the kitchen. (laughs) Well, first of all, you know, one thing that kind of happens is you have a, you know, you have a baby and they don't really need to eat food. Right. And so you can really limp by for a very long time just sort of feeding yourself and your husband. I mean, you know, or or him feeding the two of you or the two of you going out to dinner or whatever it is. It's kind of easy for a while, and then suddenly you have a family right. that needs to eat. And it, it happens very quickly. Like for me, it happened very, very quickly. And I almost didn't see it coming. And then suddenly it was like, oh, we can't just rely on you know de- pizza delivery and takeout. Right. I mean, we could indefinitely, right. but we right. don't want to um, for health and expense reasons and everything else. And yet here I'd been so focused on raising little kids and my arms always being full that it's not like I'd been just puttering around the kitchen having a grand old time figuring out how to cook right. during those years either. So I found myself in a very tough position of having this family to feed and no skills. I did not grow up learning how to cook for my mom. Right. Um, no skills, no knowledge, no experience, no particular drive to learn. And it really wasn't until I think maybe Clara was born and everyone was getting older and I really wanted their family dinners to be a, a thing, even mm-hmm. if it wasn't an every night kind of a mm-hmm. thing, which is a, 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 like a routine kind of predictable thing we could count on that I realized I kind of had to get it together. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know, that's kind of where we wound up. And it took me just getting in the kitchen a lot and trying things mm-hmm. and making mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes and also not taking it so seriously. So would you say when you started kind of that transition, would you say you relied more on meal planning and recipes or more just on let's just get this done in other words no, were those I definitely, things helpful to you or more stressful meal planning definitely was a lifesaver for me like having a certain day that I was because I'll tell you what things that are like kind of just second nature to me now you know if I go to the store I need about this much uh veg I need about this much meat I need about this much something else like that to me was foreign I would end up going to the grocery store sometimes like three times in a week because I would mm-hmm. totally misjudge or you do that thing where you got way too much uh, produce, but not nearly enough right. of the rest of it. And so there was always this imbalance and I found myself in that position. So I did do some careful, I wouldn't say it was 
um, anal at all, Mm -hmm. like meal planning. Like, do you remember that post I wrote probably five years ago now? It was just kind of like themes of the night. The six meal shuffle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the six meal shuffle. right here in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, that's... So I don't... Yeah. Yeah, I don't really rely on that anymore. But at that point, when I was still trying to figure out if I just knew every Tuesday was going to be Taco Tuesday or whatever, Mm -hmm. I think it actually maybe was Taco Tuesday, then that then I knew about what I needed to have for Tuesday. And if I knew, you know, Monday was going to be, I don't even remember what it was now. Meat Monday, meatloaf Monday. What I think it? you said, well, Mondays you said were typically like meat, starch, veg, like the more traditional yes, that's plate. That's Yeah. Because you were shopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Well, yeah, what yeah, I yeah. loved about that post, um, and I, I remember reading it the first time, and I don't think I was working for you at the time, so I was just a no, reader. No, I don't think so. And um, just being like, now this is the kind of meal planning that I can do because I like rapid this brain. may surprise people because I am very detail oriented and I like to plan but meal planning it's never clicked for me maybe someday I'm still a work in progress and um the details of recipes and shopping for recipes is like too much like I I just mm-hmm. I don't know like it's just never been quite right for me but what you wrote about called the six meal shuffle is just like what you said like kind of earmarking one day for this, one day for this. And then what I loved about that in the post is that you said like, depending on the time of year and your energy and how much bandwidth you had, you could make like ethnic night into like a time to try a new recipe or new technique, or you could have black bean quesadillas, you know? So there was room for um, you to kind of go with where your own energy was and still have a plan, which was the first time I ever read something that felt like a happy medium between meal planning and just winging it. I loved it. Well, and a lot of meal plans, you know, I've looked at meal plans before, you know, like uh, downloadable ones online or templates or samples. And it's, it's like every meal. I mean, I can't think about what I'm going to be eating for breakfast seven days a week. That's too much. Lunch, meal, you know, breakfast, lunch, snacks, and meals. I mean, I know you have to, sometimes you have to sort of loosely plan for those things because you have to have enough food in the house. But those are the kinds of things I think kind of can just work themselves out a lot of the times. Right. Um, you don't necessarily need a really detailed plan. And right. I'm also terrible at following recipes. Me too. Like I'm the person who will go back and look at the same recipe. Like I'm not even kidding. 22 times. It's like a six line recipe. Yeah. And I keep going back obsessively looking at it. Yeah. I have a really hard time with that too. <laughs> which, yeah. So it takes some time. Like really the thing is like getting in the kitchen and – trying it again and again. And in the last episode, we talked about um, soups and stews. And I was just saying how for a while I was very intimidated by stew recipes, which is like the simplest thing in the world, but sometimes it would make it seem And they do have a lot of ingredients. I feel like that right. that was something that, because I, yeah, we talked about this last week. I love making soups also, but that is one thing. And a lot of times the ingredients are seasoning, spices and seasoning, depending on what kind yeah. of soup or stew you're making. And so it just looks like six different things, but it's just dry spices, most of which you already have. So it's right. not quite as intimidating. But yeah, I agree. One thing I really like to do just in in to address that spice thing, I really love to go to like good spice shops um, and buy their seasoning blends. I mean, you can buy mm-hmm. them anywhere. Like you can buy seasoning blends at the grocery store as well. But I think sometimes there's something fun about yes. buying do you have a blend or something. There? Penzies is... We don't. Oh, uh, don't think so. I think they're based in the Midwest, but they're it, they're not okay. huge. I, th- I want to say they're based in like Wisconsin or something. Oh, And okay. then um, it's P-E-N-Z-E-Y, and they do have online ordering. And there was a couple big ones in Arizona, and they are they can be very affordable, I think, depending on what you're buying, because sometimes some right. spices are just pricier. Um, but same thing, really fun to buy, and I think you can order online. So we'll have to look that up and link to Penzies, because that's a really fun one. Okay, cool. Yeah. And there's like, ours, I think, are more local, local. Like there's one in Grand Rapids I'd like to go to. There's one in Chicago. I don't think we even have one here in town. So to me, that's like a couple times a year, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll go a few times a year and just load up on stuff. Um, But what I like about that is if I go and get, you know, some kind of dried herb blend Mm -hmm. and it's for for poultry, Mm -hmm. let's just say, well, then I know that I can use that instead of anything else that's advertised or that's, you know, recommended in any recipe. So I might read, I'll do very piecemeal Mm -hmm. about recipes. Like I'll say, okay, I'm going to take their advice on how long to cook it at what temperature, but I'm going to ignore all the rest. I'm going to ignore the herbs. I'm just going to use what I want or what I have on hand. Um, That just comes, that comfort level, I think only comes with just doing it a lot. Mm -hmm. But sometimes having a blend just makes that part that much. Because you know someone out there, some expert, decided these four herbs taste great on beef or pork or whatever. So you don't have to think about it. And I will go as far to say, because we have a a line of a few different um, spice mixes that are all, one is for chicken, one is for fish, and one is like spicy or something. 
And yeah. we've even started just mixing and matching those. Like the fish one is really good on all kinds of different things. So you can even break. And often it's the same stuff. Further, you know, often there's the same. You know, at least one or two of the, the herbs are often the same right. as the other. And if you look, another good thing is if you look at the ingredients, it can kind of guide you if you are doing something without a spice mix in the future. You kind of just know, okay, well, in this one, there was some of this and some of that. So if you're, you know, trying to stretch yourself yeah. and not rely on the mix, um, you can at least look at the ingredients and kind of see what's, what's in there. Don't you feel like there's only, you know, not that many, at least common herbs and spices that people would have just, you know, in their cupboard. There aren't that many truly polarizing ones. Right. And by that, I mean, there aren't that many that are so specific in their taste that they would taste gross in something you didn't mean for them or that someone who wasn't, you know, like I know cilantro. I know that's what I was going to bring up. Are are you a cilantro person? Do you like cilantro? I love cilantro. I love cilantro. Like the more, the the more cilantro, the better. But to me, that's a pretty specific taste. You know, I wouldn't necessarily put that in, in everything, but I'd anything Mexican, um, a lot of Indian dishes I'd put it into. I know I'd put it on almost anything. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's delicious. I love it. A lot of people don't. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash the mom hour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Um, dill is another one. Yeah. Like, dill has a very specific flavor. So like if people don't like dill and you put too much, yeah. it's obvious. Yeah. But something like, I don't know, marjoram. Yeah. Even, you know, I feel like it's really difficult to, unless you're trying yeah. to mess a dish up with marjoram. Yeah. Or something like that. It just, those feel like they kind of all go in this middling ground where it's sort of like you can eyeball it a little bit. Right. And it's not that big of a deal. Right. And I, and sometimes it depends if it's dried, crumbled spice, you know, like powdered spices, those are a little more intense than if it's, um, I guess, dried leaves are a little bit less intense. Right. So that kind of thing makes a difference. But I just feel like experiment because it's usually not going to mess it up as much as you think. And I, I know you said in the last episode that you were an under seasoner. I am. It was soups. Is it because you're yeah. afraid? Um, are you afraid? Yeah. Or I'm tentative. Like I don't want anyone yeah. to be overpowering because I'm not sure if it's the right one. <laughs> So right. I, so I go, you're just guessing. I go like, and I also sometimes have trouble with volume. Like I'm really spatially, very spatially challenged. Oh, I'm terribly. Like extremely. Terrible. So yeah. sometimes that's part of it is I just don't understand like the relational, like how much of a spice for this much soup. I tend to make big pots of yeah. soup. Um, I want to say something about meal planning for those who are like in the trenches as we talk about. 
Um, yeah. Because we're, we're kind of talking recipes and techniques right now. But one thing that's really helped me in the seasons where there ain't no recipes being followed, man, like none, um, is that that doesn't mean you can't have a loose plan. And it took me a long time to realize that one, one thing that helps me is to plan for the cop-out dinners. And uh, to me, a cop-out oh, dinner yeah. is something that I don't follow a recipe and I didn't shop for specifically. So it's based on what's around. And sometimes there's two weeks straight of cop-out dinners. But if you, if you plan for a cop-out dinner, if you know that it's going to be like quesadillas and a thrown-together salad for the grown-ups or whatever... Um, if you plan for it, or if I plan for it, I feel a lot less like guilty or like a failure about like it. Getting away with something, if it's, right? If it's on my calendar, that like that day is going to be crazy, or Brian's out of town, so I'm just going to plan for French toast. We do French toast a lot for um, dinner when Brian's out of town, which is whole wheat bread, eggs, milk. I mean, there's like it's not a terrible option. Um, but if I if I get to five o'clock and that's the only idea I have, it sort of feels like man, I failed. <laughs> but if, I, yeah. but if it's planned for, then I feel like I know. And what happens is I usually end up upping my game on the other meals because I, I've planned for a cop out. And so the icon cop outs, mm-hmm. maybe that has like a negative connotation, but, um, so it took me a long time to, to have to understand the difference between, I think of a meal plan and I think of full blown recipes with a side of you know, fresh bread warmed in the oven. And I'm such an all or nothing that if we, if it wasn't that I wasn't going to plan anything. And that is a recipe for disaster, (laughs) pun intended. So um, if you know that it's going to be a week of cop outs, plan the cop outs, tell the kids it's breakfast for dinner night tonight. We're ordering pizza tomorrow. Don't ask me to order pizza today because we're doing that tomorrow. You know, so just do having a meal plan doesn't have to be for like when you're on your game. It can also be for when, you know, you're stretched thin. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I loved the post that you wrote about cop-out dinners a few years ago. Yeah. And I remember you felt sheepish when you wrote it because you're like, these are such cop-outs. Like, these, this doesn't even count. Well, I can't believe I'm writing a post. And I actual how-to instructions. That's the part that I yeah. like. Because I was like, I, I wrote like how-tos on the French toast that I make, on the scrambled eggs that I make. I was like, should I just write a post telling people? But we all start somewhere. Yeah. And when I, you know, when uh, there was a time I didn't know how to make French toast either. I mean, right. so it it all, you know, we all start from someplace and sometimes you might know how to make something great, but something super obvious yeah, that's that true. other I think people my know how to do. Eggs have gotten a lot better like, than, yeah. than how I made them 10 years ago. And I just learned how to make an egg over medium like two years ago. Oh, that's nice. So, I mean, yeah. So I used to only do scrambled because it was just easier. Yeah. So, I, you know, we all learn different things at different times. And I, I did love that. Um, one thing I love that, about that whole idea too, though, is, you know, you can have things in your cupboard or in your fridge that just make those cop-out meals that much easier. Mm. And, you know, like a jar of really good spaghetti sauce. Yeah, of mm. course, I like to think that I'll always make my own. Right. But um, I have this one brand that I really like. It's called Mids. And I think that the sauce is really good. I mean, it tastes very similar to homemade. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of the best jarred sauces I've had. So if I just have a couple of those in the cupboard at all times and some noodles at all times and a, a thing of garlic bread in the freezer, that's one of those cop-out meals right. that takes 15 minutes to make that yeah. doesn't really feel like a cop-out. Right. Exactly. You know? Um, another one that I like to have on hand, and we talked about sausage for flavoring stews uh-huh. and soups. Um, I like to just have sausage always in my drawer because sausage doesn't go bad very fast. Uh-huh. So you don't have to buy it like at the beginning of the week right. and intend to cook it by Wednesday or whatever. Um, you know, it's all seasoned right. and salty and stuff and it lasts forever um, and pre-cooked generally. Mm-hmm. So you can have a sausage, slice it up and throw it on top of some noodles, mm-hmm. slice it up and throw it on top of some rice. That is a meal that feels like a meal. Yeah. But it's something that you can make, you know, brown the sausages up in seven minutes and and make so fast and so easily. So those all count too. And sometimes when I do my meal, I know we were going to talk about meal planning and grocery shopping. We're really mostly talking about cooking because I went off on a tangent. (laughs) But at the beginning of the week when I'm going shopping, I'll sometimes glance at my cupboards to see what I have. But I almost don't pay too close of attention because I like the surprise Uh sometimes of thinking I don't have something. And then being like, wait a second. <laughs> I know what we could Look do. Look what I have in here. Yeah. I love it. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, it makes – having those things on hand does make it feel less like like you failed. Agreed. And if the alternative is – I'm thinking of another great post you wrote about getting off the fast food habit that we can link to. But the main point yeah. is that if, if it's 
if the alternative is ordering pizza or fast food, then even a cop out is usually healthier and less expensive. Um, w- yeah, almost girl- without, you know, without exception. Um, exactly. And you can, and you can usually have it on the table faster. Right. Yeah. Win, yeah. win, win. There's nothing wrong with grilled cheese and a side of broccoli. Right. Or whatever, so. <laughs> um, so do you in general meal plan on Sunday, Monday, shop on Monday? Let's transition to kind of the functional. Yeah. How do you um, do I used to be very much in a uh, meal plan on Sundays, shop on Mondays. That was my routine for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm kind of readjusting that now. I used to do that because it felt like I would always run out of food by Saturday. Mm-hmm. And now that the kids are in school and I'm a little more, it's a little more easy for me to shop whenever I want. I'm kind of readjusting that. I'm also trying to do more of my shopping at Aldi Mm -hmm. um, because I just get such great deals there and they do their fresh meat and other specials on Wednesdays. Okay. So I'm trying to get to where I'm shopping more on Wednesdays, but right now that's a little bit in flux. And I still love the feeling of sitting down on a Sunday evening, you know, with my paper or my Mm -hmm. magazine or whatever in my kitchen and I'm cooking something because Sundays happen usually are the days we have really not very much going on Mm -hmm. and I might hang out my kitchen all day on a Sunday. Um, and sitting down, you know, with the sales flyers and making a a meal plan, I I kind of love doing that on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I'm having a hard time giving up the Monday shopping, even though sometimes I think it would work better. Yeah. I love the Monday shopping too. Uh, I, yeah, I'd be the same way. The beginning of a week, it just feels like a reboot, you know? Um, sometimes what ends up happening is I'll shop on Monday, but I'll be busy on a Monday because I've got a lot more going on on Mondays mm-hmm. than I did. And then I'll have to go again on a Thursday or something. And I'm actually kind of embracing that. Like, it's not that big of a deal when you don't have to bring kids. Right, it is exactly. a much bigger That's deal when you, you can pop in. <laughs> you can pop in. And sometimes, though, when you do have little kids, sometimes just going, you know what? I'm just going in the store for 25 minutes and I'm just going to do three days worth of shopping can also make it a little more manageable. Yes, sometimes. that's true. So sure. there's... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you've got a kid who throws tantrums or cries or whatever, and you just don't think you can get through an hour-long shop trip to right. the big box right. super grocery store, you know, it might just be make more sense to go do a half an hour at the local market where you can't get everything, but right. you can get enough for Monday through Wednesday. Yeah, and I so I survival. Well, so I shop on Mondays for sure. Um, we usually end up going again on like sometimes Friday afternoon, sometimes Saturday morning or Sunday morning, because Brian loves to cook and he loves to cook more interesting, complicated, yeah. like mm-hmm. saw this recipe somewhere, wants to try it where he spends like most of the day in the kitchen experimenting. And I'm like the functional get it on the table cook. So we'll go again. And that's like our indulgence. We usually go to Whole Foods. So I don't, I don't shop at Whole Foods Ooh. regularly, but we'll go either as a family or he'll go. And so then that can also fill the gap. If we're really out of something, or if we have like no fruit in the fruit bowl, he can pick up some bananas or something. So then that usually kind of ties us over. And I split my shopping. I'm a Trader Joe's. You're an Aldi. We're going to have Aldi Trader Joe's throw down. Um, <laughs> uh, we don't Very have- different things. Very <laughs> different things. I feel like people get, um, get passionate about them in the same way, maybe. They are. But to me, they serve very different purposes. So. Yeah. I guess I don't know Aldi. I just know people. I feel like people feel equally passionate about them to me to me Trader Joe's is where you'd go if you want like interesting sauces and condiments and and you want that feeling any of that stuff at Trader Joe's and I do all my normal grocery shopping there so I think I don't know it's close to me (laughs) and the (laughs) cost is the price is right um yeah but then I, I supplement with Costco. So Costco is big, bulk, and Costco has oh, okay. really good prices on especially organic produce. Not produce. I don't get a lot of produce at Costco unless it looks really good. Um, but a lot of times yeah. it's not. No, uh, meat, eggs, and dairy. Organic is like real, so oh, okay. the size of our family and how much we use. And have, I have a backup fridge in the, in the garage. So those are yeah. my like two. I don't do them both in the same week usually, but I can – alternate. I will, I will be honest that I have not stepped foot in a Trader Joe's in probably five years. We just don't have one here. Yeah. And when I lived in Chicago, I never really took the time to learn how to shop it correctly. Yeah. So I'd go in and, you know, load up in the cheap wine section yeah. and then kind of wander around like overwhelmed because I didn't understand the layout. And I think it's changed. And then I'd leave and I'd be like, why do I have a like carton of ice cream? All and their produce. That was the thing. Days. Everything was packaged. Yes. Yeah. So, so I felt like it was more for like single people. Yeah. And I think it's just come a long way. I still don't think it's yeah. the very best for produce. Um, but we have like a like farmer's markets and we have like a grower's direct, like direct produce market. Um, so in an ideal world, probably, yeah, there would be a better. But I do. I do my everyday normal grocery shopping at Trader Joe's. And I don't buy a lot of packaged. I don't do a lot of packaged snacks there or, or bottled 
sauces. They do have some fun, interesting things, but I actually just do like normal garden variety shopping, mostly for the prices. And I, I like it better than the big box stores, but it's not as yeah. juicy as Whole Foods. Even like, even with the kids, like I feel like the big box stores, then it's like everything with like SpongeBob fruit roll-ups and magazines yes. and the checkout line. It's like, that's like 72,000 fights waiting to happen. So, and I feel like you also fall down that rabbit hole. Like you're, you're in, there's so much variety that you end up, you know, you're looking at the, the crackers and yeah. it's like how many crackers how, didn't even know there was this many kinds of crackers, yeah. you know, it's just too much sometimes. So I try to stay out of those. We had our local kind of regional big box is called Meyer. Uh-huh. Um, we do have a Costco, but it's probably 45 minutes away. Meyer is everywhere. Um, but it's just, you know, I'll go the, great deals, great deals. Right. I like Meyer, and they have a really good, um, uh, cash register, res- uh, coupon thing where okay. you'll, you'll get really good register receipts. Like your, uh, I guess coupons. They're just, mm-hmm. you'll get like $5 off your next meat purchase oh, or whatever, right. but then you have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it sometimes is just too much for me. Well, I feel like and grocery, Aldi has feel gotten like a lot better too. stores are like a highly like quirky personal fr- preference thing and you get really attached. And then I've like had shifts mm-hmm. over the years where I like, I wasn't always a Trader Joe's person or a Costco person. So yeah. it just, it's funny. Like we get, and then the better you get at that store, then it's hard to change, right? You're like, I can't. Right. Go. Absolutely. I don't know where the, you know where everything is, is yeah. and yeah, you kind of look, you figure out how to work their deals. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment. (laughs) Right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Well, and, and I and I will say as to your point about Trader Joe's being a lot different and Aldi is exactly the same. Like if you haven't chopped an Aldi for a while, try it. I mean, they've got a gluten free line, huge organic line now. Um, a lot of interesting stuff they didn't used to have, like coconut oil and cashew butter and just okay. all kinds of cool stuff. And like their deli areas, great. I you think don't have them Aldi is coming to... California. Didn't I read that? I think yeah, I sent I th- that to you. Yeah, I think so. It, in California, was one of the only states that it wasn't in for whatever reason. But yeah, I think now. It yeah, is I have not been so. in one. Um, do you have sprouts? 
Or is Sprouts a... No. Sprouts is we, another... I mean, I don't even have a Whole Foods. Sprouts is another, like, poor man's Whole Foods. And I don't... Yeah, right. I don't know how regional it is. Um, I can never get 100% behind going there for some reason because... But I think it's, it works really well also if you're, if you're not quite ready to pay Whole Foods prices, but like a lot of fresh produce and, um, and their layout is really nice and open and they have a nice big deli section, which Trader Joe's doesn't. I mean, their deli meat is packaged and stuff. So, um, yeah. anyway, that's another one. I've also never been to a wild oats. Is that the other one? Wild yeah. Oats? I think that is a thing in the, I feel like I remember that from the Midwest. I don't think we have that. Okay. So many yeah. choices. Um, so many choices. I was going to ask, so do you, um, do you go in with a specific list or more of your kind of general meal plan and see what's good? I usually have a fairly specific list. Um, but sometimes you got to like pinch hit mm-hmm. because sometimes something's on sale and they're out of the quantity you need. Or right. like I'll find oftentimes what ends up happening is the meat that's on a great sale. The portions are too small. And I can't make the portion work like I could get more than one. Right. But then it doesn't add up. Right. You know, and sometimes you can go to the butcher counter if, if it's that kind of store. Um, or you can go to the butcher and ask for a specific size cut or whatever. But not all stores are like that. So sometimes you just have to be able to kind of pinch it. And so my list is fairly specific. I write the meal plan at the top. Okay. So that I can glance up if I know something's not working out, you know, and I don't panic. I just kind of look at the top and go, okay, rejiggering, like... I can't do, um, you know, chuck roast because they're out or for right. whatever reason. So what other, what could I substitute? And often it's really simple. I mean, maybe it'll be a, a chicken instead because the vegetables I was going to have with it would totally work with chicken. Right. Um, but again, a lot of that is just being comfortable. And mm-hmm. some of that won't happen until you do it a lot and you break out of your sort of fear-based rut of right. only being able to cook chicken breasts, which right. I was in that rut for many, many years. The only kind of chicken I would even buy were boneless, skinless breasts and drumsticks. Yeah. Because I knew how to cook them. Right. And they weren't scary. But, you know, once I kind of branched out into whole chickens and split breasts, you know, where it's like the butterfly. Right. um, Yeah. Those are super easy to make too. Like just any cut of meat, it does not have to be as scary as we kind of make it. And that's the same with any kind of grain, um, any kind of rice that you're not familiar with, any kind of bean you're not familiar with. There's just basic stuff you can do. And if you screw it up, you screw it up. Um, You try again next time. Another thing along those same lines that I feel like I had a revelation about was in terms of buying vegetables, if you have young kids and your kids are not eating a ton of the vegetables that you're making, I feel like I was assuming that salads were our best bet for a long time. I I really like salads. They make a good side or they even can make the whole meal. My problem is I hate making salads, like hate them. I don't like washing lettuce. I don't like bagged lettuce. I I hate the whole thing. They don't taste as good at home either. I don't (laughs) Um, and so what would happen is I'd buy a lot of salad material, romaine, lettuce, spinach, and salad stuff also goes bad the fastest. And so I would put off making the salad thinking I'll throw together a salad to go with this meal, which I would never do. And it wouldn't happen. Right. And then we're not eating the vegetables, mostly my husband and I, because the kids would, I would be like throwing carrot sticks at them anyway or whatever. Um, so I now buy way more vegetables that work well cooked because I have more choices for how to cook them. They last longer. And if I do want a salad, you're right. It ends up being something we order if we're out or we do on the weekend if we're making one of those, you know, more interesting meals. So um, it just used to be my default, like, well, Brian and I need our green vegetables, so I'm going to buy a bunch of romaine lettuce and spinach. And then I would just look at it and feel guilty and not make salads all week. So I buy so many vegetables now, like more, and I don't usually have a plan for them. But most of them, mushrooms kind of get slimy quick. Um, but other than that, most of them are fine for like a week. And so then I just have choices about what I pair them with, how I cook them. You and I both love roasting vegetables, but you know, Brian's more of like a stir fry saute person. So if he's Mm -hmm. home, we'll do that. So that's another thing that it's, I kind of had to like give up on the idea of a side salad for a while. I like that. And I feel like I also have to put in a little plug right now for frozen vegetables, Mm -hmm. um, especially when you have a smaller family or smaller kids and you don't know how much, right of whatever, you know, fresh produce you buy, they're actually going to eat in a week. Right. I mean, now I know if I buy whatever amount of vegetable I buy, it'll go. Right. But when the kids were smaller, I really relied sometimes on a bag of peas Mm -hmm. because I could dole it out in small contain, you know, in small portions and it would get eaten. And, and there's a big, even now, even with as much as, you know, women's magazines and stuff have talked about how frozen vegetables are, they're like nutritionally very good for you Mm -hmm. because they're picked in the height of freshness, especially if you live someplace like I do where you're kind of far away often from the right. 
the produce by the time it gets to you, the frozen is often your better bet. And there's still sort of, I feel like this prejudice Mm -hmm. about it. Um, Some things don't work as well frozen. I don't know that I'd ever get like frozen cauliflower. Although, I mean, I guess I've never tried it, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. And if you're doing doing something with a lot of flavor or a stir fry or something, then... It really doesn't. Or matter. mixing or mixing frozen with fresh, like frozen corn and frozen right. peas, you know, great to throw in yeah. with other stuff that you bought fresh for fried rice or like a stir yeah. fry or whatever. And I guess if you want to, if you want to roast, which relies on some dry, like right. them to be fairly dry, I would just make sure you, def- you know, take them out of the freezer like hours right. in advance and let them naturally defrost. And then if you need to drain them and if you need to like maybe blot them with a paper towel to get that extra moisture right. off. Right. But otherwise, I mean, it's just, it's such a good option. It's such yeah. a very easy, good, inexpensive option. And it takes a lot of the pressure off of using it right away. Yeah. So. Agreed. Agreed. Well, I know you need to wrap things up, don't you, Sarah? I know this pretty soon. Kind of I'm off to volunteer app. in the classroom, which we talked about uh, two episodes ago. <laughs> episode 21 Um, but yeah no this has been great I feel like it's really helpful to hear how other people approach this and I hope it's helpful to hear that you know you don't have to have a meal plan every week I really don't I feel like this I feel like this was more of like the like laying out the um the philosophy and we could almost really do a show just digging into the actual process for both of us but it's a lot to cover I mean it's a big thing for us and it, it it's like one of those things that like tends to take up a lot of our mom energy. I it, think. it does. And I think it's loaded. If you're not someone who loves to cook or has been well-trained, it, it can be loaded with some guilt. Like, yeah. you know, if I can't, if they're not going to eat this, why bother? You know, right. it didn't work last time. So why try again? So it can be kind of discouraging if you're, if you're aiming for a standard that maybe isn't possible. But I think one of the things that you did a really good job over the last few years on the happiest home is like, sh- you know, offering ways to improve and things to strive for without that sort of unrealistic standard. So I agree. I'd like to throw in another really quick plug for the episode I just did of the home hour yeah. a couple of weeks ago with uh, Eliana Trinilla because she's written a couple of, she's a food blogger. She's written a couple of cookbooks mm-hmm. and she'll still be the first person to admit that she does not always cook for her family. It does not always look like them all sitting around the table together every night. Yes, and I she love still that. makes a lot of mistakes. I she makes that. mistakes even though she does it for a living. And so we're all allowed that was episode to learn and make mistakes. Three, I think, right? We'll put it okay. in the show notes, but in case you're listening and you're, you want the next podcast to listen to and you're not I'm going to go over to the website. I'm pretty sure that was 63. Cool. Well, this was great. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in real life around the time this airs. It will be great. Um, Everybody, you can always email us hello at themomhour.com and find everything we talked about today at our website, themomhour.com. This was episode 23. And you'll find all the episodes there. You can leave us a comment there or a question, an idea for another show. Um, And then anything we talked about, we talked about a lot of good resources today. So we'll link to those all in the show notes at episode 23. Sounds great. Perfect. See you later, guys. See you in a week. Uh Uh-huh. You too. Bye-bye. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash the mom hour. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Teas Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Tease Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Tease Made.